This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to show you five natural remedies that you can use to treat your dog or your cat for insect or bee stings. Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, in this edition of Veterinary Secrets, it was partly inspired by my daughter who was recently stung by a bee and which had me thinking about, you know, what could we actually get on her to have her feeling better. She had substantial swelling of her toe, um, which had me thinking, well, what about our dogs, our cats? I mean, she was just, put her foot down under the table, got stung. Just as easily, that could happen to your dog or your cat. And yeah, I think it's important that you're aware of some of the options there are to treat that. If your dog or your cat is stung, I mean, you obviously may not be there to see it, uh, but shortly after, you're gonna see them in probably limping. I mean, there's a couple different places where it can happen. Obviously, they can step on an insect, they can, you know, step on a bee, or, you know, Lewis, when he was younger, I mean, he, he and his buddy Pearl got into a bee nest, and poor Lewis, he had them all over his body, where they got entangled in his fur. Poor thing. So, I mean, if that is to happen, I mean, there, I think there's a number of different things you need to be thinking about. Fortunately, for most of you watching the video, if that is to happen, it's gonna be one sting, it's slightly uncomfortable as it, is, as it is for us, but not much else happens after that. I mean, it's nice to give your dog or your cat some type of symptomatic relief, but for the most part, we're not dealing with any serious you know, allergic reactions. If there are multiple stings, or if after some type of insect bite or bee sting, I mean, for instance, your dog becomes especially, especially lethargic, especially weak. Um, perhaps you might see their breathing rate increase, not relaxed how Lewis is now. Um, they may have difficulty breathing. I mean, that's a sign of acute anaphylaxis, a more serious allergic type reaction. And in that case, your dog or your cat needs immediate veterinary care. But for the purposes of this video, we're assuming that's not the case. The first thing is probably the obvious and often something few of us will ever use. It's ice. So imagine, for instance, I'll just go, Lewis. Good boy, Lewis. Good boy. And lie on your side. I got Lewis's foot here. You know, imagine he's been stung, you know, some part on the paw. So yeah, let's see. See one of his pads. And it would be red. It would be slightly swollen. You may or may not be able to see a stinger. It would just be obviously uncomfortable. Like, and it would be pretty clear. I mean, something's instantly happen. You're probably going to see the bee still there. So the first easiest symptomatic thing is putting ice. So I've got right here. I mean, here's an ice pack that I just pulled out of my freezer. And you could either put, you know, something like this, this plastic, plastic ice pack, which is partly protected. You could put that directly onto your dog's pad or paw or the affected area wherever they've been stung. Hold that for 30 to 60 seconds. Often I say you can hold it till it starts to cool down. If it's direct ice, it's not like one of these containers, then you want to wrap it because you don't want to freeze the skin and cause additional damage. So just put something like a light cloth, you know, a thin cloth or something on it, and then apply that to the skin. The next one is an essential oil that I've discussed for a variety of different things in the past called lavender oil. Sort of one of the first essential oils many of you will have started with if you're using any type of essential oil for yourself, for your dogs, or your cats. Um, it's a great one for anxiety, a great one just to drop into a humidifier. Um, as well, I mean, it has a number of different antibacterial properties, but in this case, it's also moderately anti-inflammatory and will pr provide some soothing symptomatic relief. And, and if you've got something, for instance, you know, such as a little, uh, there's been a bee sting, for instance, I'm going back to Lewis's same pad again, because he's letting me use it. Good boy, Lewis. You could put it directly right on your dog. So just put, I'm just going to get a drop right there, Lewis. Put it right on the area. I mean, loosely just spread it around. Good boy, Lewis. The next one is one of those remedies which you may have tried on yourself, your kids, or your pets. Um, it's with the use of baking soda. What you're doing is making a baking soda paste. So here's baking soda, or as you can see it there, sodium bicarbonate. And what I've done here, I just add a little bit of water, just enough to make a paste. You need hardly any water when you're doing it. Like don't, don't go crazy because in no time it turns into a soup. 
And what you're going to do is put that directly on top of that sting, or that area that's affected, and putting it right, you know, covering the entire area. Let's try that on Lewis here. Goodbye, Lewis. And once again, the thought is it's slightly anti-inflammatory, and it's going to help whoa, drop some of those inflammatory, drought some of those inflammatory cells. You. Because we're trying to bring some immediate symptomatic relief. Because as you can imagine, you've got this venom that's been injected into your dog or your cat or yourself. It's really painful. I mean, you get this acute swelling and the body says, what's going on here? This acute tissue reaction really, really hurts. And so it's just another simple, completely safe remedy you can consider using. That's baking soda or sodium bicarbonate paste. The next one involved a trip to my garden. And it's the use of rhubarb. So I'll grab the plant here. Here is the big leaf. Many of you know rhubarb. It's one of those easy ones to grow in your garden. So I have, it's one of the few things that grow well, rhubarb and potatoes, and occasionally lettuce. And so I just grabbed a big leaf here and showed you the stalk. Um, I did a little bit of research on rhubarb. And it is got a whole variety of different therapeutic properties. It's quite commonly used in Chinese medicine. Primarily though, it's the root or the rhizome. So not this leaf, not the stalk, but the actual root. Um, it's primarily used for gastrointestinal disorders, has been used for cancer, um, is also known to be anti-inflammatory, so it can obviously be used topically. So a couple different ways you could use it topically. One, the one suggestion is break off a stalk. So there's fluid that's coming from the inside of the stalk and squeeze some of that directly onto your dog, your cat's affected area. So onto the area where they've been stung. So let's go back to Lewis's sample sting and just squeezing some of that stuff out. And then the last one, it, it is a home remedy. Um, no, it's not natural, but it's one I think that many of you should have on. It's an antihistamine. So there's a couple different antihistamines that I have advised that you use in your, our dogs and our cats. For both the animals, dogs and cats, chlorpheniramine or chlortripolon is probably one of the more common ones. A pretty standard dose is a four milligram tablet. I have some here. Um, this is a generic veterinary one. A four milligram tablet, we're looking at a cat dose of two milligrams, so that's a half of a tablet, every two to three, two to, uh, two to three times a day. So you get a half now, a half in four to six hours. Um, so we're looking at a dog dose of a boat. So that's, we're looking at four milligrams per 10 pounds, uh, given two to three times daily. And, and that's with this one, um, chlorpheniramine, it's known by the brand name is Chlortripolon. The other one is Benadryl, um, there's also diphenhydramine. Um, and we're looking there at a dog dose of one milligram per pound. Um, so something like Lewis, he'd need about 90 to 100 milligrams. Yeah, he was a pretty big guy of the Benadryl. And, and once again, that's given two to three times a day. And that would be one where you want to give some more symptomatic relief. Your dog or your cat seems uncomfortable. It's obvious that they've been stung or bit by something. And not, long, not, not only is there this swelling, in some cases there can, all, it can also be very itchy. So the antihistamine can work well for taking away down some of that inflammation and also making your dog or your cat you know, less likely to want to scratch the area. Thank you for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets on Insects and Bee Stings. What I want you to do now is first click that link in the box above that can subscribe you to my channel. Then you can go ahead and click that link in the box below. I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.